Okay, so I've often imagined myself backstage at all the great things I want to do in my life, like having my own talk show or being a rock star or a great thought leader. In each case, I would also envision having the opportunity to speak to someone much like my younger self. My hope has always been that I'd give advice that would last. So, without further ado, here's your backstage pass. So, I'm backstage right now with only minutes to spare. And I've asked the crew members to leave, the ones in charge of makeup and hair. I wanted a minute alone before I step out of my comfort zone. For I'm about to perform on the stage of possibility. And with me walks a new energy. God has lifted me to a new place in time. Now, it's my responsibility to shape that destiny of mine. I speak of one vision with many dreams. And I bring one message with many themes. Think of this as a master class because you now have all access this is your backstage past take a walk with me let's go on down i will introduce you to the possibilities which surround it. so listen one of the first things i want to tell you is that you have to dress for the success you expect to meet but understand that no matter how good you look, the wrong attitude will make your wardrobe incomplete. And I've lost 20 pounds just watching what I eat. Because I stopped taking in the negative connotations people try to feed me through their so-called constructive conversations. I have them on the tick talk. And when their time is up, their boats will dock. They try to make you feel bad about your decision. But they will never win if you make consistency your religion. And they'll come at you saying, don't burn your bridges. But if the bridge is missing its support or suspension, then you have every right to look at it with great apprehension. Okay? So, but listen, they're playing my theme songs. And that's my cue. So I really gotta run along now. But remember, dreams come true. Life as a spiritual being through a human lens, having conversations with God about so many things. In this special behind-the-scenes episode of the podcast, you get to be an ear on the wall in our meeting with our new producer as we talk through the thinking of some of the latest episodes and the making of the newest edition of the podcast called Dear Oprah. We'll be right back after this short break. Listen, I know you've been thinking about starting a podcast and trust me, I am tired of hearing you think about it. And this ad is too short for me to explain telepathic abilities to you. But what I will tell you is that you can do it for free and be as cheap as you are and as cheap as you want to be. And Anchor has the tools for you to do so creatively. Now, as soon as you submit, your friends can listen on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever they prefer to listen to the shit. And you can make money on a little thing called listenership. So just get to it and download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. So are you ready to eavesdrop on our producer meeting? All right, I got you in. Okay, go in, go in. Go in and have a seat, my friend. Aman, Gary, and I had sat down to unpack what that documentary um felt like for us and what was communicated and what we experienced from watching it it was a heavy thing it was a lot it was a lot i wasn't i i in particular i watched about all of those parts of it the part one the part two and the over interview i watched each of those two times so 
you could imagine what the emotional you know it's heavy stuff you know um and so i you know i i i wasn't i i took that in but didn't realize that you know how the effect was that it would have on me personally being that of uh, you know my history um and so i just had to kind of sit with that for a moment and then as i sat with that other things kind of you know happen in the course of the summer and all of that and so it just i just kind of had to put it on the back burner because i just knew i wasn't ready to sit down and edit that conversation <laughs> because you know when you go through that process you have to get back into for me anyways in the way i produce this this podcast i have to get back into the emotions of it so that even in the editing of it i can be as authentic as i want to be in telling you know the story even from the producing part you know so i knew what it was going to take and i just knew that i didn't have i didn't have it to give i couldn't go there at the moment you know um but the intention for doing what we did was to start this uh, this this new um, uh, segment of the of the podcast where we're calling Dear Oprah, that encompasses um, the column that I'm writing called Dear Oprah for this uh, group Facebook group that we have that's now as of this recording more than forty thousand uh, members strong. And rapidly, rapidly growing. So I decided that I wanted to do some original content that would be exclusive for that uh, group, um, but also, you know, for my um, listeners as well. Uh, because it's going to be about a lot of things that we all can relate to and very close to the same things that, that I would have done on this podcast anyways. Um, so I thought it would be a good... Um, marriage so to speak of content and fusing those together um, and so in the, in the the Michael Jackson conversation is when we wanted to first but we, we'll get into um, a lot of the column called Dear Oprah as you heard in the last episode we'll be doing uh, a lot of those in the near future and the, you suggested Calvin that the Dear Oprah column should be its own thing I did. Yeah. Why? Why do you think? I, I think that even though you're talking about similar topics and things that might have the same audience, mm -hmm. I felt thematically it would be different. Right. Mm. As, as a theme, you want the Dear Oprah to stand for something different. Yeah. That is actually related, but not the same. Mm. So I felt like having its own platform would probably be best for it. I, mean, I, I don't think they can be dis they have to be disconnected. Right. I just think that if, even if you connect them, it still needs to be a segment or its own thing, its own show or episode. Yeah. Yeah. Or a series of episodes. And, you know, that's why I thought maybe it needed its own podcast. Oh, okay. But before we move on to that specifically, I. I we have Gary here as well. Mm -hmm. um, and you guys mentioned that you founded the group. Um, what was the thinking behind that? What What was the connection that you were trying to actually have with other people? Well, I started the group on the, the very same day that Oprah launched uh, OWN. And um, I seemed to be, ha happened to be the first person uh, to, to do that. Um, and in the beginning and now the, the intent was to have a, a, a place where the uh, viewers would come to discuss the content on the network, you know, how we felt about it, um, uh, what direction the network was going, the programs, how the issues that the programs were dealing with and highlighting, um, and to basically have that space to have that kind of community and that conversation around the content. And so my intent was to kind of run the group like a magazine and to have it be where everything that you saw from the group would be something that you would want to see in terms of content, you know, whether it's a news story or whether it was a video, a clip or something like that. And less like how a lot of groups tend to be like a bulletin board, you know, hey, I just joined a group. OK, that's nice. But. I don't need to see it in my newsfeed, you know, that kind of stuff, uh, less of that kind of stuff and more of, 
you know rich content um so that's that's what we've been doing and that's what has been um seemed to have worked out really well so gary you've been involved so what about you what's your kind of vision and well i think it's been a good platform for people who actually who were familiar with oprah from the oprah winfrey show and actually new people who actually started watching the network kind of to bring them together to kind of have people of the same mind, thought process. So people who were watching the shows and one of the things I liked about it too are people giving their insight into what they got from particular shows or particular episodes. Sometimes people would have discussions about the particular show and what they got from that. So it was a kind of a place where you can actually have like-minded people kind of a similar thought process or maybe not similar pro- process get somebody's thought process on a particular show and I think because of Oprah Winfrey people went to the network because they expected the content to be I guess worthy right because it's coming from Oprah Winfrey um, now we know that starting a network you have to bring things in that may or may not last throughout the whole process and that's what started in the beginning I think for some of the shows and some stayed and some didn't. But the people stayed and the people kind of still contributed. And I think over the years, as Akil said, you can see the, the, the number of people who actually are impacted by the number of people who have actually joined the Facebook group. So with over 40,000 members, you said? 40,000. And a lot of that, a lot of those numbers have happened in the last year. Like it just skyrocketed. And I think that's because of the, what's been going Facebook, on with Facebook. Because Facebook has started to... Uh, one of the main focus now is they're doing groups. So they're putting groups now at the forefront of the platform for themselves to get... Their focus is to get more interactions with their uh, their members than to people to be isolated. So they're trying to get people to have things that you're interested in to form groups or f- figure out things that you may not be aware of. Okay, but, based on what you're watching or based on things that you have selected of shows that you like. If you have five Oprah shows and your favorite shows, they might suggest, hey, you might be want to be part of this group. Mm-hmm. And that's probably helped on part of the growing of the membership too because Facebook has pushed the groups on the platform. So as the people were running this group though, what's it like managing oh a big God. group like that? Listen, <laughs> the, that has been one of the um, most tedious day-to-day challenges because you get so much um, spam and everything that you could imagine just coming at you. like The Russian robots. It's crazy. Um, and we, we have one um, lady who's been you know really consistent in helping uh, me do the um, moderating, but I'm hoping that we have some more people <laughs> as time go on because as the group gets popular as it's getting you know really really fast you need more people to help or, or otherwise you you know there's sometimes where I've gone in the, uh, to approve you know new people one day I'll look and there'll be less than 100 and the next day it'll be 600 just in that short space of time you know and so I've, we've seen looking back over the um the insights, the, the group insights, like like ten thousand people in a month, you know, has has been happening. That's what's that's where it's trending towards. Like that's a massive amount of new people, and and then the engagement also goes up with that um, as well. And the columns, the Dear Oprah column that I've been doing in the last uh, three months, I have never, and I've written for online. Uh, newspapers and the Virgin Islands and such um, doing columns and stuff I have never gotten that kind of level of feedback um, ever uh, in doing writing and stuff like that and so you can tell that there's a real hunger and presence there for people are you know very engaged with what's going on in that group so that's very positive and very encouraging to see that you know they they're they're being impacted by it the messages have been awesome uh, I think I probably should share some of them as you know um, as, as, as part of this whole um, Oprah content, but it's been really interesting. So I, I did have a question specifically about the Dear Oprah. Mm-hmm. So what's the inspiration behind that? I mean, what what 
made you decide that you wanted to take that extra step instead of just moderating a group, but actually writing and talking specifically to Oprah? So I, one of the things that I love about O Magazine is the What I Know For Sure column where, you know, Oprah talks about, about, about a lot of things that inspires her um, and, 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 uh, the, and, what, and the wisdom she, that she draws from her life and her experiences and so forth and how she's making sense of that. And so the Dear Oprah thing, um, it's, it's, um, I think it's unique in that you have um, someone who's watched the show uh, for 18 years that it was on the air and has continued to bend up, well, I would say raised by the show uh, in many ways and um, and now a uh, supporter of the, the, the network and all that. Um, for me to be able to s- write something like that and in, 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 in a way reflect what I've learned um, for all, all these years um, being a part of uh, the Oprah world, so to speak, and, and, and learning from her and so forth. And now as an uh, uh, adult, speaking about that in, in the way that I make sense of what's going on in my life in relationship to so much of the wisdom that I've gained over the years from watching the Oprah Winfrey show and, and, and having that be a part of my, you know, letter to open letter to her. Uh, and, and, I, and it's also thinking about what Super Soul Sunday is, um, where Oprah kind of likes to have these really um, deep spiritual conversations with authors and <clears throat> different cultural figures um, about their lives and their, you know, what they're going through and so forth. It's also that type of content. Um, and I think that um, if she ever happened upon any of these letters, that she would appreciate that. Um, that type of of of, of uh, open letter that where it's actually very um, what's the word cerebral and spiritual and um, and 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 authentic and naked, <laughs> um, you know, and in, in terms of the things that I'm talking about and expressing. Yeah, but you're not really just talking to her. I mean, it seems to me, like you said, it was an open letter mm-hmm. that I, I thought it was refreshing that anybody can get this message mm-hmm. if they're so inclined. Yeah, if they're so inclined. Right. Mm-hmm. It's good to know, especially from the comments and from what you just said, like people have been saying that, you know, they feel it, what I'm saying. And and that it, it's because I know that one of the things that um, I am here for in my work and through my work is to probably uh, to be able to speak some of what every people aren't able to say sometimes with 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 what they feel and I think through my poetic literature I've always gotten that type of feedback like people are saying that you know you spoke the words in my heart I didn't even really know how to say that like that but when I read what you wrote that felt so much like what I feel you know and so that's 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 always a gift to be able to hear people say that um, and it makes it in a way everything that I've had to go through in order to be able to say it worth it you know because it doesn't come easy you know because you actually have to have lived some things right and back to your point earlier about the chaos Mm -hmm. what's your tagline again oh oh gosh (laughs) shedding skin sprouting wings and about time we get back to that yeah 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 so we will we have and we are we intend to uh continue to to do that 